Hey guys, welcome back to another Phasmophobia guide. Today I'll be going over some tips and tricks in order to locate the ghost room as quickly and efficiently as possible. The most reliable way to find the ghost room is by using the thermometer. I do recommend that you all grab a thermometer each and all split up. Temperatures of 13 degrees Celsius and higher are normal. As soon as you start hitting 12.9 degrees Celsius or lower, you have either passed the ghost when it's patrolling, or you have found the ghost room, if the temperatures are consistently low. I just got a 9 degrees and a 10 degrees here, so the ghost may have just passed me. I'm getting consistently low temperatures in here that are 12 degrees or lower, so we have found the ghost room in this case. Another good way to find the ghost room is by using the EMF reader. The majority of ghosts will give off some form of EMF reading when you pass near them, whether this be EMF level 2, 3, 4, or in some cases EMF level 5, which would be evidence, as seen here. Sometimes you may get a low EMF reading, for example EMF level 2 or 3. Eventually this could progress to EMF level 5 as the mission progresses, as the ghost gets more angry. However, this is not guaranteed, so that is always something to bear in mind. Just another tip if you're struggling to find the ghost room, sometimes it's worth listening out for doors moving, radios being turned on, phones ringing, or in this case I can hear that a sink has been turned on by the ghost. For the larger maps such as high school and asylum, I do recommend that you all split up. If there's four of you, maybe Two of you stay downstairs, one left, one right. Two of you go upstairs, someone covering the left side, someone covering the right side. I do recommend you all bring thermometers. Look for cold rooms, 12.9 degrees Celsius or below. One useful tip for high school is to listen for the phones ringing. If the ghost is haunting a classroom, they do like to ring the phones very often. This could really help narrow down your search area by listening to which direction the phone is coming from. Another item that you can use which is especially useful on larger maps is the parabolic microphone. This detects sounds through walls and across very large distances. To use the parabolic microphone, right click to turn it on and point in a direction. If you are looking in the direction of the ghost and it is active, you will get a reading on the parabolic microphone. Sound sensors are extremely useful on the high school and asylum. On the high school, I do like to set them up at the top of the hallways so they can cover a large area. Back on the truck, you can see the area that the sound sensors are covering by looking at the yellow squares. You can see on the charts for the sound sensors that the second sensor we placed has been triggered at the moment by the ghost, so this has narrowed down our search area massively. Just a quick summary. First of all, try the thermometer, any temperatures that are in the 12 degrees Celsius or lower range. If you're not having much luck with the thermometer, do try the EMF reader. Do listen out for sinks being turned on, doors being moved, any radios being turned on, etc. Sound sensors and the parabolic microphone are especially useful on the larger maps, so do make the most of them. Try and spread out your sound sensors in order to capture a large area to narrow down your search. Don't forget to split up on the bigger maps using all of the tips above. And finally, on the high school, do listen out for phones ringing. If the ghost is haunting a classroom, they do like to ring the telephones. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful. Many more Phasmophobia videos to come, so please stay tuned. In the meantime, stay safe and happy hunting. Sound sensors can be extremely useful on high school. Oh no.